and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about the basic workings of geographic information systems. I'll be focusing on concepts, not how the working is implemented in a specific application. In the next two videos, however, I will be looking at how these basic workings are implemented in, on one hand, ArcGIS Pro and on the other hand, QGIS. So for this video, it's the general concepts. The next two videos, I'll be looking at how the principles are implemented in ArcGIS Pro and QGIS. So if you remember back to um, the video on um, conceptual models, I talked about that we had a world of observation and we looked at that world of observation through ontologies or conceptual models. What is interesting for, in, in connection with geographic information systems is that we here have a target audience. We are talking about that we have some world of observation that we want to communicate or analyze with a specific target audience in mind. So these are our two starting points, our world of observation, our reality, and our target audience. If um, we try and visualize um, a geographic information system as this big burger, we have on the top bun, we have the logical tier. In the middle bun or in the meat, we will have our control tier, and at the bottom bun, we, are, but we have the software tier. The control really consists of what decides what we do, how, our, how we implement our work. And this is basically controlled by or managed by two components, our institutional framework. So what do we do in this institution? So if you're employed in a municipality, what is the business rules of that municipality? If we are at the university, what is the, we wouldn't call them business rules here, but we'll talk about our institutional framework. So which software do we have and uh, which other resources do we give you to work with? We should also remember that we all have some form of pre-understanding of things. So we might call this our analytical framework. So how do we normally analyze this or that type of problem. So those two combine these, how do we normally do things, which we call the analytical framework we'll choose to work with, and then which resources and what is the traditional business rules of the organization. These two control how we look at it. So given these controlling components, we will take our world observation and then we will apply an ontology. Remember, an ontology is really just defined as a conceptual model. So as we talked about in that earlier video, we have entities, so trees, houses, buildings, but also these more um, conceptual entities such as municipalities. We have property fields, so something that varies continuous, such as elevation. And then we have these categorical partitionings um, typically SOAR classes. So based, using these three types of components, we will construct a conceptual model that is our ontology in which, through which we see our world of observation. Remembering that an ontology really defines what really exists. So the ontology see, tells us about what we can see in our reality or our world of observation. This is covered much more in detail in the video on conceptual models. So once we have created our conceptual model, we are ready to start the real work, if you wish, where we start into the digital world. So if we look at what is in the digital tier of our geographic information systems, we basically have four different components. Um, we have A management service that is where we can uh, create delete 
transform our data sources. So that will probably be the first thing we will do when we start on a project is that you'll use this management services to collect data from different sources, perhaps even create some of our own data. And this data is then sent to our data services. The data services have the function of storing and retrieving data in some data format. And they then can send it on to the other two important services, the visualization services, where we can visualize our data in different ways and our analytical services where we analyze them. If we just look at this in general concept, we can look at the, the, the software tier that I've been talking about. So we had our data services that can read and write from the data sources. Um, we have our management services where we create, delete data sources, transform them, change projection coordinate systems, all of these special things. We have our visualization services and we have our analytical services. So that's the basic workings of the software. But of course, they need some form of user interface. So if we look at what this can be, most GISs will have a, what they would call a catalog or a browser, a user interface for finding data or finding places where you want to save your data sources. So basically manipulating collecting from if you have, once you have your data sources available on your, on your hard drive or on your network then we use this catalog or browser called differently in the, in um, the two pieces of software we will be talking about so in ArcGIS they call them catalogs and QGIS they call them browsers but they do the same they go and find where is a specific data source then we have our map UI where we were using that to filter data so we have some data coming from our data source but typically we don't want to show all of the data in the data source we will probably want if the data source was roads we might only want the motor roads we can symbolize it so we'll say okay we might symbolize motor roads as big red lines or blue lines or whatever we can do scaling so we want to show our data at a specific scale and of course if you're going to create new data or modify data, we'll also typically use the map user interface for doing that. We'll have a design user interface. The design user interface is about putting a layout into the final output product. So the output of the product is probably just not just a, what they call a map frame, just the little area of a map with some colors on it. We might want other things like some graphs, pictures, uh, north arrows, scale bars and legends, all those things, texts, um, all of these things and how they are laid out on the final output is what we use the design user interface for. And then we'll have a analytical or two um, tools so where we can do buffering, overlay operations, all those other things that uh, we have to do. And finally, we will have a project management where we decide, okay, where are we going to save our data uh, or our working project, our GIS project? Um, which are projects do we have? Which settings do we want our GIS to speak in Danish or English? All of these different types of settings, there's lots and lots of those in most GIS, so they will have their own project management user interface. So if we just make a little short preview of what we're looking at in the next two videos and look at how these user interfaces are implemented in, uh, in, in, um, in ArcGIS, we will see that um, we have a map interface where we can uh, display our maps, so this is this area here, and it goes together with what they call the content. So we have you see which layers, which data sources are displayed here. We have their catalog for browsing data sources. We have what they call toolboxes for at, where we can have all our analysis and modification things. And then we have a design user interface which will give us some blank sheet 
in which we can uh, then um, put our where we want our different elements to go and change fonts and all those other things. And finally, which we can't see at the same time, but in the background I've displayed it, we have um, some options. So we can go in and set the options. So we can say how does editing, how do we want our layout to look, which typical um, page sizes that we want, all these different general project related settings. So that's how um, the user interface looks in ArcGIS Pro. If you look at the same in QGIS, you will say here that we have our map user interface, which again has this display area, and here called layers, which was called content in ArcGIS, but the same thing here we see which layers is in our map display, and we can change the coloring and filtering in here. We have our catalog of browser. In QGIS it's called the browser, where we go and find our data sources. We have a settings, so this is where we have our pure project management languages and default um, coordinate systems and all, all these are different th things. Um, it comes up from the setting menu. And then we have our layout um, where we can, or design user interface, where we can insert map frames and pictures and text and move them around and output them in different types. So these, those are, you can see if we look, compare, so this was the interface in ArcGIS Pro and here we have it in QGIS. They are really relatively similar but of course with lots and lots of small specific details. So I've now talked about the basic principles and the user interface and what is AJS. If we look at how the general workflow within AJS is, it will probably start out where we have some data sources. These data sources we will load in and we will start out by filtering them. Um, the closer to the data source we can do our filtering, the better because we'll have less data to work with. So as a principle, we will try and filter as close to our data source as possible, but we filter many places in both QGIS and RGIS. So we take our data and say, filter it out saying only, we want only to use our um, motor roads or only to use our or see our paths or whatever we want to see. Um, the general language for filtering is SQL and there's a video series on SQL and how that's implemented. So we can watch that later. We will then, after we have filtered the data, we will symbolize it. So we will decide, okay, motor roads, they will be displayed big fat red lines or blue lines or whatever is the tradition of the country. And these go into our map display. We have the layers or content, as we call calling QGIS, or content as it was called in ArcGIS, where we can decide which layers go on top of each other. And it's also the interface to the symboling, symbolization, and the filtering process. And all of that is then displayed in a what we might call a simple map. Our final output, we'll take our map and place it as a map frame. In our output, we'll put in North Arrows and Legends and all those other things. And of course, it's very, in many situations, we might want to have another set of layers displayed in another map frame. So we could have one map frame showing, for instance, a zoomed in the area where we display the different soil types of an area and then an overview map with some other layers in it displaying where we are located within the country. So typically, we in our output will have several map frames that come from several different maps um, and with different contents in those maps. So that's the general working of, um, of the GIS. As I mentioned, there's two following up videos for this video. So there's one video where I talk about it in um, 
ArcGIS Pro and one where I talk about how these things are implemented in QGIS. I hope you like this video. Hope to see you in other videos. Bye.